Really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Font of Magic, make sure you check that one out and find out why I'm saying, oh my goodness, is this thing good. But don't leave the check out that episode just yet, because on this episode, well, I, I think this um, pretty much just encapsulates everything um, about uh, this card. So to find out why Wizards is seeing dollar signs with this one, well, let's jump into it. So first up, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. So Archivist of Agma, and my apologies if I'm mispronouncing, that is a 2-2 halfling cleric with flash that costs 1 and a white. It has, whenever an opponent searches their library, you gain 1 life and draw a card. So this is a 2-mana value engine with flash that you can just flash in whenever you need to. You know, an opponent's about to search a library for something, you're like, wait... One second, um, let me get this down first. Uh, now, go ahead and search. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the one life in the card drawn. This card has a ton of implications. This thing is very powerful. And yeah, before we jump into the further, okay, this is not a competitive channel, a CDH channel, but I can imagine with the amount that they tutor in CEDH, this is going to see an absurd amount of play, but yeah. Even for casual, this is going to also see an absurd amount of play. Maybe not, you know, the same percentage, but still. Just next time you play a game of Commander, just maybe keep like a little notepad next to you and just tally how many times players search for, you know, cards in their library just to see, okay? And you might be surprised because, yeah, even in a casual meta, it happens a lot more often than you might think. And and keep in mind, yes, when it comes to, you know, tutoring, I'm not just talking about, you know, tutoring for any card with, you know, a, a tutor spell. I'm talking about just anything, even, you know, a, a land that go gets you another land. And we'll talk about some examples here in a bit. But still, this thing I can see being an incredibly high demand and incredibly expensive. Again, low to the ground, life gain, sure. Not, I mean, just nice to just pad your life total, but more importantly, low to the ground, card draw, that can just draw you, I mean, for again, for two mana at flash, this throughout the game, at the very least, even if it draw, just draws you two cards, that's going to be worth it. And there are going to be times where this stays in play and draws you five plus cards for a two mana spell. Now, the reason why I chose to call this episode what I did and why I put, you know, the dollar sign emoji uh, in, in the title, well, wizards, they made certain decisions with this card that I disagree with. First up, it has become apparent that Wizards is putting more and more effort into finding ways to get white card draw, which is great because, well, Mono White has been struggling with ramp and card draw for a long, long time. And for a long time, it has been definitely considered by the vast majority of players out there in Commander to be the weakest commander by a long shot, not even close to the other ones. So while I do applaud Wizards for, you know, finally saying, oh, maybe we should get, you know, Mono White some cards to, uh, to actually solve that issue. What I don't applaud Wizards for is them making them, well, again, not really Mono White specific. What I mean by that, and I'll give some examples of other ones here in a bit, but yeah, th this card can just fit into any deck that has white in its color identity. It, it is not hard to cast at all. At the very least, in my opinion, this should have cost white, white, and not one in a white to make it a more restrictive casting cost and to make decks out there that have, you know, more than just white in their color identity actually, you know, think twice before being like, oh yeah, I can just easily slot that in because it's easy to cast. If you're trying to benefit mono white and to help them catch up, then help them catch up specifically. Don't just say, oh yeah, this solves it because it's, it's, you know, in white. No, you're helping other color identities as well by doing this. And uh, I see that as a intentional thing, most likely because, yeah, this card is going to be in higher demand because it can fit into more decks out there, and therefore they're going to sell more packs because players are going to want to open this card when it's, uh, I don't even know, 30, 40, 50, but I have no idea how much this is going to get to, but yeah, it's going to be a chase card. And again, then are you really helping mono white players or just mono white players that are willing to dump a ton of money into their decks because they have to in order to actually draw cards? Because, yeah, let's take a look at some examples of other, you know, cards that do benefit mono white, but also are easy to cast and other colors utilize them as well. Or should I say other colors? Other color identities that also include white. 
Like most recently, a card that I believe should have been, you know, white, white, white instead of two and a white, Smuggler Share. It's an enchantment that says, beginning of each end step, draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn, then create a treasure token for each opponent who had two or more lands enter the battlefield under their control this turn. Because this card has an incredibly non-restrictive casting cost, again, two and a white, not white, 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 it can fit into a ton of decks out there. So if this card was truly meant to, you know, benefit mono white, well, it's only doing so for mono white decks out there that can actually afford it because it is a $34 card already. And that price is probably just going to keep increasing. Again, when it comes to my, my view on this, and it might be somewhat cynical when it comes to wizards and these kinds of decisions, well, wizards is saying, okay, so we see this problem that we should be solving. And you know what? We'll solve that while also taking advantage of the situation and just making these things into chase cards that are, you know, at rare or above essentially, and that are going to get incredibly expensive because they can also go in any deck outside of mono white as well that has white in the color identity. Another example, Esper Sentinel. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X for X is Esper Sentinel's power. Now, this one, it's going to be hard to, you know, say like, oh yeah, you should have made it white, white. It probably should, still should have been a two mana card regardless. But yeah, this thing is $22. Of course, it can help out with card draw. But again, it's not just for mono white decks out there. And unlike Smuggler Share, this one, I believe, uh, and please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, sees a good amount of play in CDH. So yeah, I, I'm sure Archivist of Ogma is going to slot in pretty nicely next to this. But yet another example of, you know, mono white card draw, but at the mythic level is Mangara the Diplomat. Mangara, again, only has one printing at this point and is a $12 card. And it says when an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you or in Planeswalkers you control, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. So multiple avenues to draw multiple cards with each trip around the table. And still again, a $12 card. But I think the most egregious example of players saying, hey, Wizards is benefiting Mono White, and it not really, you know, being a benefit to Mono White, is uh, is Smothering Tithe. Smothering Tithe is, of course, an enchantment that costs three and a white, and it says whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If they don't, you create a treasure token. This card is $41, and until it is reprinted, that price is going to keep rising. And yes, I know my other examples today have been on card draw, but again, like card draw, and I believe I mentioned this earlier, Mono White struggles with ramp as well. So players definitely point to this card and be like, hey, Wizards is helping Mono White ramp. And, and, and I would respond, no they are helping any deck that has white ramp. And it's, it, this is an absurd card regardless, but still. If Smothering Tithe and Archivist of Agma and other cards like them are meant to help balance the scales and help, you know, mono white catch up, then help specifically mono white catch up by making these have a more restrictive casting cost. So that Smothering Tithe just can't be slapped into every single deck out there that has white in its color identity. If this was one white, 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 this would not see anywhere near as much play because it would have a much more restrictive casting cost. It would be really hard to justify in decks that have, you know, unless they've got an absurd amount of mana fixing, you know, three plus colors. It'd be very hard to ever cast it. So then that would be a benefit to mono white by then this card not being utilized in other decks out there. And of course, then it would keep its price down to a more manageable level than what it is currently. But Wizards, of course, like their chase cards, and you know, by having those chase cards out there and having a less restrictive casting cost, more players can chase after them. Now, one card that I was happy to see recently that does benefit Mono White is Rumor Gatherer. It's a 2-1 Elf Wizard that costs 1 White White, so again, a slightly more restrictive casting cost. Even that extra pip can help, you know, deter certain decks from utilizing it. And it says, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, scry 1. If it's the second time this ability has resolved this turn, draw a card instead. So this can provide solid card selection and card advantage, not absurd amounts, but but very solid amounts. And again, this at the uncommon level. So this is a fantastic card that can definitely benefit a ton of mono white decks out there, and it's going to be affordable. And again, it's not one that just any other decks can be like, yeah, I'll just slap that in there because it's good. Okay, one more thing that I will get off my soapbox, I promise, at least for the time being. Because when you're in mono white and your card draw options, you know, your best ones for the longest time have been cards like, you know, Mind's Eye or Laura Seeker Stone or Sandstone Oracle, all of which are artifacts that can fit in any deck, but other decks don't play them really because, well, for the most part, they're not as effective as just regular card draw in those colors. Mono white is the only one that is behind in that aspect. 
But you know, wizard solution now for, you know, solving card draw in mono white seems to be mostly printing chase cards that are going to be incredibly expensive and can be utilized in other colors as well. Or I keep saying that, sorry, other color identities as well. Instead of making some cards that, you know, are at lower rarity, again, like a rumor gatherer, which is a bit more specific, has a more restrictive casting cost and can benefit the vast majority of mono white decks out there without, you know, costing 30 plus dollars or so to do so. Okay. Now off my soapbox, what are some ways to actually make this Archivist work even more effectively? First up, keep in mind, of course, there are ways to have your opponents actually search their libraries with, you know, cards like Path to Exile, Temple of the Discovery, and Field of Ruin. Path to Exile says, Exile target creature, its controller may search the library for a basic land card for that card on the battlefield tap, then shuffle their library. Now, keep in mind, this is a may, so the opponent doesn't have to, and therefore, if they are like, okay, well, I could go get a land and ramp myself, but then that other player is going to, you know, gain a life and draw, so I might not want them to do that. The most of the time, they probably will, but you never know. Or how about a tempt effect, like Temple of the Discovery, search your library, land card, put on the battlefield. Each opponent may search the library for a land card, put on the battlefield. For each opponent who searches a library this way, search the library for a land card, put on the battlefield. Then each player who searches a library this way, shuffles it. So in combination with Archivist, this could be, hey, I mean, if each player goes and gets himself a land, you just drew three and gained three life. On top of, you know, also ramping a ton. You can also, in a way, kind of force the issue when it comes to searching with Field of Ruin. It taps for a color, so by paying two and tapping and sacrificing it, you can destroy target non-basic land opponent controls, and then each player searches their library, basic land card, puts on the field, and then shuffles. Now, this one does not specify May, so I believe this would just force all players to do that, essentially. I mean, they can fail to find if they really want to. But yeah, at least forces the search. So therefore, yeah, gain three life, draw three. Please correct me below in the comments if I'm wrong on this, but I think that's correct. Now, of course, outside of forcing opponents to actually search for their library, like I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of ways that players search their library. I mean, rampant growth, any kind of a land ramp effect if you're playing against green, which, yeah, chances are you are probably playing against a, at least one green deck. Every time they go and search the library for a land, you are getting an extra card and an extra life. And of course, you know, any kind of a tutor effect again, like a demonic tutor, diabolic tutor, search your library for a card, put that card in your hand, then shuffle your library. Yep, I mean, any kind of a tutor essentially is like, yeah, let's just uh, gain a life and draw a card as well. And even something as simple as your opponent playing in Evolving Wilds can really help you out. Tap, sacrifice Evolving Wilds, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. I mean, how many times in, in a game of Commander do you see Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, now the, the new Capenna, you know, kind of Evolving Wilds-ish lands, whatever you want to call those, Myriad Landscape, Blight of Woodland, etc, etc, etc. There are a lot of lands that actually go get other lands, and every single time an opponent does that now, as long as you've got Archivist in play, you gain a life and you draw a card. So again, if you might be skeptical on just how many cards this, you know, new Archivist can actually just have the potential to draw you throughout the game, just next time you're playing a game of Commander, just, you know, tally, make a note on how many times people search their libraries. It's a ton, even in casual metas. But of course, like I mentioned earlier in, you know, more competitive metas or, you know, just higher budget metas as well. I mean, there's going to be a good amount of probably fetch lands there as well. So you're going to have even more fetch lands outside of, you know, Evolving Wilds, like a Misty Rainforest, that entire cycle, essentially, you're going to be able to benefit whenever your opponents utilize those. So yeah, obviously it's going to have more of an impact in certain metas, but yeah, overall I think regardless, it's probably going to draw you a good amount of cards throughout the game pretty reliably. Now when it comes to commanders that are going to want to consider this card, and again, I'm going to say budget aside, because I have no idea exactly how expensive this is going to be. It could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, not sure, but regardless, I think it's going to be pretty expensive. So if you're not considering budget, again, literally every single mono white commander probably should just be utilizing this card. Because again, in mono white, you have very, very, very few options of good card draw. And so sure, if you're playing a light pause deck, yes, that deck is about auras. But still, you probably will want Archivist in that deck for some card draw. Also again, of course, you know, that life gain again is just something that kind of seems to be tacked onto the card. It's really not all that necessary and the card would be pretty much just as popular as it is without it. Um, yeah, if your commander also benefits from life gain, you're also going to want this card like Heliod Suncrown and other mono white commanders. So yeah, needs the card draw and also has whenever you gain life, put a plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. So that can add up a ton throughout the game. I mean, you could even make your archivist into something massive. If you really wanted to smack your opponents with your archivist, go for it. But you're probably not going to want to turn it into an even bigger target than it's already going to be. 
Another kind of deck that might want to utilize this card is a Hate Bears style deck. Something like a Thalia Garden of Thraben might be an example, you know, just for Mono White. She has non-creature spells cost one more to cast. So yeah, I mean, I guess I should talk about what Hate Bears are. Hate Bears are generally two mana creatures or low to the ground creatures that have a negative impact on your opponents or potentially a way to deter them or at least to gain value when they do things. So again, Thalia has a taxing effect to punish your opponents. It's very low to the ground and very easy for you to get out. And again, the more of these hate bear effects that you get out, the harder and harder your opponents are going to have to work to actually do things. Whereas you, you're going to, you know, get Archivist out also in this deck and then just benefit whenever your opponents just happen to play an Evolving Wild so you can just generate even more card advantage and get further ahead of your opponents and get even more taxing effects and even more hate bear effects in play. And, you know, outside of Thalia, of course, there are plenty of other just brutal hate bear commanders out there as well. And, you know, ones that have even more colors than just mono white. Yeah, Gaddic Teague comes to mind. Non-creature spells with converted mana cost four or greater can't be cast. So that's a thing. And also non-creature spells with X their mana cost can't be cast as well. So this can shut down a lot of decks out there. And again, by getting more and more hate bears in play, you can shut down opponents with more and more things while also just gaining incremental advantage, you know, again, from something like Archivist. Another thing to consider is that Archivist is a cleric, so yeah, in a cleric travel deck like Aura, you can definitely utilize it. It has whenever it and other cleric you control dies, your turn target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from your graver to the battlefield. Now, when Archivist dies, well, you're going to be getting something back pretty small, which is still nice value, but again, if Archivist is in your graveyard and you've got something that dies that has, you know, converted mana cost three or greater, cool, you can just get that back so you can draw even more cards and gain even more life throughout the game. But again, overall, I think Archivist of Agma is going to be very expensive and see a lot of play. Again, when it comes to Mono White, outside of budget considerations, it is going to be very hard to argue against this card. Unless you literally play in a meta that literally utilizes no tutor effects at all. If, if no one is playing green and does not land ramp, if or, you know, even Wayfarer's Bobble, I should say as well. I should have brought that one up. Or, you know, if, if no one utilizes any kind of just regular tutor effects or, you know, Evolving Wilds or Terminal Great Expanse or any of those cards, if you never tutor, sure, your meta might not want this card. But uh, I, I think that uh, most decks out there do utilize at least some tutor effects. And again, if you're skeptical, I do urge you to please just try to make note of every single time someone tutors in a game of Commander. Because I think that amount is going to surprise you just a little bit. But again, I hope just moving forward, Wizard starts to make card draw and card advantage spells in Mono White more accessible when it comes to, you know, not always just being printed at Rare or Mythic. And less accessible to other colors, you know, instead of just having you know, a cost of one and a white, maybe white, white to make it slightly more restrictive casting cost. So other, you know, color identities out there actually have to think about it before just being like, yeah, that, that's good. So I'll just use it too. But you never know. There might be a spoiler that's just around the corner. That's like, okay, yeah, scry two, draw two in mono white at uncommon. Highly doubt it, but we'll see. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned to this channel for even more exciting spoilers and quick takes coming up. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So make sure you comment below and let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.